Hi, and welcome to Newsmakers for inside analysis and behind the scenes commentary from Santa Barbara's top journalists and local political leaders about the most important news events in our community. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts. Tonight, we'll look behind these headlines. It's down to the wire for wannabes in big county and city races for the primary elections. Santa Barbara's favorite greenhouse gas Republican lands a big job at the Environmental Protection Agency. Amid a national epidemic of school shootings, a district task force moves ahead with school safety strategies. And later on, we'll hear about the Independence Special Hunger Series and the panel's winners and losers predictions for the June 5th balloting. Our panel tonight, political writer and Anna Marie Gotts, Thomas Boswell, Josh Molina. <laughs> Nick Welsh, Santa Barbara's second favorite columnist and executive editor of The Independent. And nonprofit consultant and Maverick School Board member, <laughs> Laura Capps. Thank you all for coming. Josh, you're covering a lot of races, but I think uh, the most interesting thing uh, that you had this week was the auditor controllers race, which is usually not a hot contest, but has been enlivened by uh, corruption charges that Jen Christensen has made against Betsy Schaefer, the number two person in the office. Are the, her allegations legitimate? The best part of that story is I was only the fourth media outlet to write about it. So I had to do some digging to present I'm something. I'm coming in on it this weekend, Josh. Don't worry, I'll straighten it all out. I had to find a new angle to present something to the readers. So Jen Christensen is alleging that Betsy Schaefer has some conflict of interest uh, in the, with her county. She was married to the owner of a company that had a million dollars worth of contracts with the county. So there was an on and off marriage. They were trying to work Which it out. Which gave her 50% stake in the company. 50% of 27%. In, 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 I, yes. okay. I know you're a journalist, so we won't get into math here okay. too much. But 15%. <laughs> um, but it had a million dollars worth of contracts that yes. went through the office where she is the second in On grade. and off, on and off. She worked for the county for some of that time for a few years here and there. The whole time she's the bookkeeper for the software comp company, Simpler Systems. And she also was married to part of the owner, so she had a stake in it. They eventually got divorced in 2013. She gave up her shares, and she got the house. What Jen Christensen is saying is that this points to a credibility issue. It points to an ethics issue. Do we want somebody like this overseeing money at the county? And are they legitimate? It's, it's up to, to people to decide. There, there's no, I don't think there's any legal conflict of interest there. There's a perception, and I don't know how much people will care about that in an auditor controller's race, but Betsy Schaefer, she openly acknowledges everything. She says, yes, everyone at the county knew. They knew this. Which makes it worse, in, in my view. But I she mean, says, hey, on the, the private company side, I, I never made any Except the decision. checks were coming to her house. The checks from the county were being mailed to her house that yes. she got in the door. I don't want to you know, get too into the details down in the weeds on this, but did either of them ask for an endorsement from you? Yes, yes. <laughs> what did, and did you say yes? I actually um, meant to, and I just haven't. That's a horrible answer. But, <laughs> you <laughs> meant to? I didn't get an answer. Oh! I, no, I didn't know My you were going to ask me this. I, I, yeah, I, I just, yeah. That's going to be a great ad. <laughs> <laughs> you were right at Wednesday after they go, I did, uh, I'm Laura yeah. Camps. I, did, I meant I, to endorse Betsy. I did I receive a call difference. from Betsy, and I have I just have yet to connect with her. Oh, oh I apologize. Okay. Oh, I thought you meant. Okay. Yes. You think this is all a bunch of baloney? I kind of do. Um, you know, it smells funny. It looks funny. But by the time you figure out the movable parts, you've fallen asleep. Um, <laughs> and I. I Not you know, the way I explained it. Maybe actually the way, the way you, you explained it. it. That was I was going. Okay, I know there's fire. There's a lot of smoke. Um, Kelsey Burger wrote about it. I think uh, uh, Blanca uh, <laughs> Garcia wrote about it for us, both of them. Uh, you know, you look at it and you look at the dates when she was working for the county and, and you kind of uh, look at it sequentially. And, I mean, the contract started before she was working with the county. Uh, she comes on, uh, the contract is in place, you know, her husband does it. You know, but, isn't there a certain permeability between look, the it, finances of look, the county it, it, and the it finances looks, of it? It looks way too cozy. But from what I heard is 
A, it's a, it's a really good system. It works. It delivers the goods that it promises. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a good system. It's not like other sort of deals that Josh has worked, written about where there's a sort of insider stuff, but, you know, the, the goods don't work. Um, That's why I wasn't uh, first with this one, just so you know. It wasn't that kind of story. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's sort of like <laughs> when you listen to Jenny Christensen, she's really impressive for like the first five minutes, and you're like, wow, this is alarming. And then seven minutes, and so you're going, okay, what about you? Yeah. And, and, it's, and, and by the time you're through listening to her, it's all such an attack on, on Betsy Schaefer and it's also intense, and you're not quite sure if it is as bad as it sounds. Um, we should we, say you endorsed Betsy. We, we did endorse Betsy, and, and I think and Laura's going <laughs> to. That's a call. We, 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 <laughs> we got we got around in to, December. <laughs> we didn't get around to the Joe Holland race, for example, but we did get around to this. One. How about the sheriff's race? Did anybody ask you for endorsement in that race? No. No. How no. about in uh, District Three? Uh, Michael Vidal did through his campaign person. His, he had his people call you? They, yes. Wow. That's weak. But uh, I'm not, I don't live there. I'm not getting involved. And with Betsy Schaefer, I just, I do want to meet with the person and I just haven't, we hadn't connected yet. That's, that wasn't a very graceful way to say that, but um, it's a, and it's a job I need to learn about and make a good decision, but I know the clock's ticking, but. Yeah. You know, we called around to different uh, other employers that, where Betsy worked and, you know, we, we talked to them and well, no, she's very, I mean, you yeah, mean, no, I mean very we're straight and, and very... Uh, a, she's a CPA and Jen work. isn't. B, you know, the other people that she worked for said she was very competent and they spoke highly of her ethics. Uh, you know... And but I, I will say this, uh, you know, the way you describe Jen and, and of her personality and the way she explains it, a reasonable person would look at all of the ties that she has to both simpler systems and the county and at a minimum say, that's probably not how I would have handled it. I mean, that, that's not the ideal way probably for Betsy to have handled it, but at the same time, it's not so flagrant where we're going to overlook. That was very right. diplomatic, Josh. No, I mean, that, that, well, I, I mean, you're, you should show that in your class to your to your students when somebody. No, no, I mean, we spent a lot of time. If, if you were okay, a journalist, right, would have to have a higher standard it than that. Yeah, exactly. It does not pass. And the she's smell. a government official, so if you're going to, yes, Jen is a little bit overwhelming in all the facts she presents, but. I mean, she does have some points. She does have you know, some points. No, she raises some really good questions. But at the end of it, you go, I would want this person in a cubicle that I would stick on somebody uh, who I thought was up to no good, and she would chew their leg off. There was, of course, a $2 million embezzlement from the Auditor Controller's Office. 1.7. So, uh, you know. 1.7. Oh, and that was, over, big and Jerry, big that was over nine years, over, among nine people. <laughs> I mean, come on. No, it's, it's like okay. not enough opioids to even get constipated. <laughs> you know, when you, when you boil it down per person per year, you can't even get a good constipation. All right, big scoop coming up in Newsmakers. <laughs> Jen has taken her complaints to the U.S. Attorney's Office, and uh, they've okay. been referred to the FBI. So we'll, we'll find out huh? what happens. All right. We'll find out. And you know what? Maybe they'll take, they'll perp walk Betsy Schaefer away as she writes her poetry and cries. I don't know. All right. Nick, former supervisor, perennial Republican candidate, and your close personal friend, Mike Stoker, was sworn in last week as Westerner Regional Head of the EPA. Is it fair to call this a fox in the hen house situation? You know, I'm so sick of the fox in the hen house. I hope somebody can come up with a better analogy. Oh, wait a minute. That oh, let me read. Here, here. Hunger is where rubber meets the road. Now, what does that mean? Let me, well, we'll get to hunger in a minute. Go ahead. Don't, don't, throw, don't get at me about cliches, pal. <laughs> no, that was a pretty bad one. No, right, I so mean, what do we think about Stoker as the, in the EPA? Seriously, yeah, here's, here's the good isn't this news. horrible? Here's the good news about Stoker. I'm just going to be Mr. Pollyanne today. I'm going to put a, a sweet face on everything. <laughs> good. Um, Mike Stoker will return our phone calls. You know, you might not like what you hear. You might be horrified by what you hear. Which is more than you can say for the school district. It's more than what you can say for the school district. But we, we'd like to talk to you about, mm, Mike will talk your ear off. Yeah, I mean, Mike is clearly in sync 
Mike Stokes, you know, for people who don't know him, um, was a county supervisor uh, yeah. in the late 80s and the 90s, and he sort of helped fabricate um, a very uh, uh, pro-growth uh, uh, majority on the board of supervisors. He was very effective for a while uh, at, at doing that and attacking uh, the bureaucracies that were considered regulatorily um, uh, onerous to those in the ag and business communities and the oil communities. And we, for example, had a uh, APCD, Air Pollution Control District, which was really uh, a pathfinding uh, uh, agency for a while. And it, it passed all kinds of uh, laws. It got laws passed in Congress that gave Santa Barbara County extraordinary uh, regulatory efforts over offshore oil. Mike helped lead the charge to uh, essentially chemically castrate those agencies. Right. And um, So isn't this horrible from an environmental perspective from a CDC? Isn't it awful that we have Mike Stoker as Everything us? about the administration is horrible from an environmental perspective. So, I mean, it's Scott Pruitt. Who, who are we going to get if to represent? I mean, I, I sort of, you know, I, I'm glad that Linda Kropp and everyone has put forward his record again so that it's in the public domain and that we got statewide papers writing about it because he, it is his record. But I, I mean, in addition to calling you back, I mean, I do think that there is potentially some benefit that a, a hometown person is doing this job. I mean, that's just to be charitable. I, I some more think, why would anyone... Because there's personal relationships here? Yeah, yeah there's, there's mean, knowledge and there's personal relationships and there's an ability to get, you know, I mean, he is responsive. He's... Um, well, your mom, as a yeah. matter of fact, so when he applied for a mediation, federal mediation board, um, he was endorsed. There's letters of recommendation by your mom, Salud Carbajal. Uh, Pedro. Uh, Pedro Nava? I mean, that's... And Das Williams. And Das Williams. I think I read that somewhere. Yeah. It I wasn't think, in the Independent, though, was it? Uh, it couldn't right. have been in your paper. It must have been under yeah. the, hot, the fox in the hen house. But, I mean, so there is a... a they, you know, you can call them up and talk. So what will that, what will that matter? Well, you know, we have Casmelia uh, toxic dump festering away up in North County. Uh, it's a super fun site. Um, and the EPA has made that an issue under Pruitt. And who knows, maybe Stoker will do some good. I mean, Stoker, as always, I mean, the good thing about Stoker is like Pruitt, he's afraid to talk to anybody, right? He has to have like 15 security guys because somebody might call him a name. Stoker is so thick-skinned mm -hmm. and so resilient and so used to people calling him names. It doesn't bother him. He is a former debate champion. He can bring it on. He's not afraid. And he'll, call, he'll argue back. So he's comfortable in a way that a lot of these guys from the Trump administration aren't. So maybe there'll be some practical deals to be made where, oh, okay, we can do something. The reality is Stoker's not going to be calling the shots on whether or not right. uh, clean air standards uh, apply for California or tailpipe emission standards um, are going to be relaxed in California or not, or the extent to which the federal government's going to go to war with us. He's just going to be the, the errand boy on those. Um, but I think on some of the other stuff, having that relationship will be of some benefit to San Barbara County. Yeah, he'll be the implementer. And my question is, why would he want it? I mean, I, I don't know why a Republican why would want to work, and, work and, in this administration. And that was entirely opposite of what you wrote about him in your Pluto column. Just it's for the record. No, it's not. It's it's not it. <laughs> before, we, uh, before we end with Mike, so the LA Times reports that Dale Francisco was a newsmaker uh, uh, regular, was, was writing, we can ask him next week about it, um, writing letters to uh, uh, members of the Senate committee trying to torpedo uh, Mike's thing. What's that about? I don't know. I mean, Dale's, Dale's a uh, Republican. He used to be a Democrat. He used to give money to, you know, no offense, you know, Lois Caps, not, you know, your mom over here. Um, but um, He did? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, he, he, he did. donated to her he back he in the day. Years, yeah. years ago, years ago, a different, different Before version Tom of Watson. him. Huh. So, so, you know, Dale's a very you know, sensible Republican. I'm sure that's offensive to some Republicans, but you know he's somebody who feels. So you're saying that Mike is not a sensible Republican. What, what, what Dale was saying is, uh, Mike Stoker has never run a bureaucracy of 700 people. He has no administrative chops to talk about. To put him in charge of that is, uh, you know, 
like giving some, a blind person. Didn't, didn't Dale and Mike come to blows over this whole thing when 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 Dale was the head of the county committee and his? They didn't come to blows. That was somebody else. But um, Mike was involved in that, and um, you know there well, was, it was a, Gandrude, But Mike was representing Gandrude, right? There was there was a dispute uh, about Dale Francisco's partner who was running the Republican committee for a while. And she was a paid staff member, and there was uh, a, a big dispute amongst the Republicans about what kind of a job she was doing. I think she got fired. Can we go back to the auditor controllers? Race? No, this that's... Is too, yeah. This is too in the weeds for me. Newsmakers. <laughs> no political gossip. Too small for us. <laughs> or too old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, really. That one's got, I, that one's got old on it. I know. All right. At least I didn't ask you what was in Doss's mind when he wrote a letter on behalf of. Uh, of Mike. But no, to answer your question about Stoker, I mean, uh, I talked to I talked to Bill. Wall. You answered it. No. It's okay. No, I mean, I mean, I talked to the supervisors who we worked with, um, you know, my, you know, the environmental supervisors, yeah. and they said, no, I mean, Mike was horrible in terms of his votes, but he was a congenial guy. You could talk to him. He told you, you know, you pick the poison. Okay. And, and I noticed that the words Greca oil have not come up yet either. But well, well, I, if you talk no, about I know that. you. I know. <laughs> I have inside. Don't miss it this, <laughs> this week. Nick's on it. All right, Laura, you've been leading the charge for updated safety protocols in the schools. What's going on with the task force uh, that the superintendent appointed to deal with this? A lot. We had a great first meeting and a, a task force, and we hired a um, school safety coordinator the first time, which is a really important position. And um, a lot of parents went to this uh, this this convening, and there's different subgroups that are meeting. And the point is, I mean, it's all on mental health, it's on technology and social media, it's on um, school safety protocols, but also law enforcement and how the community. Um, fits into all of this and you know what thing there's just a huge emphasis and a prioritization on it which is what I was hoping for and I'm it's nice to see it in action is anybody so is, that, is anybody mean, calling to arm teachers no no okay. not sorry. not no it, you know but so what does that mean like when you talk about like mental health and how do you how are kids going to these schools who being trained to be alert but not freaked out it's a challenge. I mean, I'm not a mental health expert, but the point is that none of these, it's none of these pieces are sort of in silos. And I think a lot of times you sort of put forward. Well, I, I objected to these plans that seem to be, um, you know, they're dictated by the state and they're due every year, and they had a sort of cut and paste feel to them. And that's what I objected to, and sort of raised the flag. Meanwhile, this task force was just getting going, um, but it's really just kind of pulling all the pieces together and putting the same people in the room. And we have this amazing expert. Probably the school yeah, safety, Shane Jimerson. He's a professor of education at UCSB, and so he's been front and center on this task force, sort of making the point that it's not just sort of what they call the the hard reaction, which is let's arm teachers, let's get uh, sheriffs in there, but it's also the the soft, the, it's the social and emotional health and well-being of our students, and trying to figure out, yeah, let's not freak them out, but let's have a place where people can talk. So, so does this include protocols for what you're supposed to do in case of a mass shooting? Is, is that a district-wide thing? Does every school yeah, have a yeah. different so those one? Protocols, yeah, those protocols are part of the this, this school safety um, uh, realm of this, is to make sure that, <laughs> that all those protocols are really understood by changing staff. And Dr. Jim, Jimerson's point was those protocols, all of this needs to be re-examined every two years because um, safety threats are changing and things are protocols and we're, we're learning new information. So this is an ongoing um, effort. You have some naysayers that say, oh, you know, we, you can't stop any of these things from happening. But I believe that you try to do as much as you can and pulling people together like this first um, workshop did, I think is really important. Have, has this kind of approach worked anywhere? Are there any best, I mean, are well, there, it's hard to know. Any... I mean, it's hard to know what works. I mean, in terms you mean of the absence of a mass shooter. The shooting, absence of a mass shooter. Just... I mean, I can say that you know we yeah, but it's I mean the um, the point is yeah you can't in my in my view you can't not do these things and we need to make it a priority and that's what this task force is doing. All right. Now you you had uh, you had positive things to say about the Independence Hunger cover story, did you not? Yeah, Which, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a tough subject. The fact that we have. Well, it is pretty pathetic. What are the stats? How many how many um, hungry people? Well, yeah, what we found out was that you know, Santa Barbara County uh, has the highest uh, child poverty rate 
in the state. <clears throat> yep. And that's sort of an alarming number. And I think the other number that was sort of jumped out and bit me was that there's been a 30% increase in the number of students deemed homeless, which is a little bit different definition than the typical one yeah. that you picture. Um, from last year, from 2017 to now, that's a pretty big jump. And I think there's been a 35% increase in the number of food stamps uh, that have been uh, issued in Santa Barbara County um, in the last couple of years. So those are all sort of alarming statistics. What is, the, what is the district doing about it? Well, what I'm proud of, about is I think the way that we feed kids in our school district is one of the best things about our school district. I mean, it really is. And I, what I like the, about Nick's piece in the Indy this week is that it focuses Plenty on... Plenty of free parking. <laughs> it focuses on the fact that schools are really a central part to the answer. I mean, some kids get three meals a day and snacks at, at school, and it's something that maybe if you're not engaged in schools on a regular basis, you wouldn't realize. But the food is... I mean, it also shows you... Um, I mean, newsflash, there's a lot of bureaucrats that work in, uh, in schools, but Nancy Weiss is the opposite. She's a champion who figures out, okay, yeah, I only have this much budget, but I'm going to give... I'm Organic. I'm going to give uh, bean-based proteins. I'm going to just try beet to... Beet What is it? Beet burgers or something? Beet what? pancakes. Yeah, beet so it's pancakes. not only... It's not just... Yeah. I mean, but it's... That's a so scandal. I think, I think what we're doing at the school district is is astounding, and, it, and it's completely needed. I mean, half of our kids are, uh, rely on this food. The yeah. only place in town where you can have food trucks is with the uh, school district. Oh, really? And... Um, and what's really, I mean, I don't know if you, you, I'm sure you've eaten the, I mean, for four bucks, you get a really decent piece of chicken, some fruit, and some milk. I mean, Absolutely, it's, yeah, so adults can It's like a really, the best beet. deal in town. It is the best deal in Josh, do you, have you ever had a beet pancake? <laughs> have you? Jerry? Oh, I, and I never intend to. Jerry, yes. I think you're Serbian roots or you're in denial. I'm, I'm going to bring in meatless burritos next Just meeting. don't bring next beet time. pancakes. Yeah. Yeah, really All good. right, real quick on the elections. Uh, who's going to win in District 3? I know it's going to be a close race. Probably Michael Vidal is going to win, Duh. I would say, just because you, know, you guys are working sniffing pretty hard. Your own you guys are sniffing your own glue. I know everybody says Michael Vidal just because he works harder. All right, he's working harder Who than Who do you ever. think is going to win? Okay, first of all, there's two that are going to win before Michael Vidal. One, this is the outside shot. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to give you a chainsaw. I'm going <laughs> to predict Elizabeth Hunter. Because what's going to happen? You're making Josh smile. Yeah, because first of all, you'd be stealing my prediction, <laughs> my off the record prediction. Well, you can go, <laughs> you, know, you can go off the record all you want. Did reporters go off the record? I mean, because with all each right, other. Yeah. What, what, what do we know? Of the of the people who voted already, um, the Democratic uh, majority is, you know, it was there like seventy five Republicans who cast ballots and about four hundred uh, Democrats, right. more women. More white people uh, have voted in this. I think the fact that Elizabeth Hunter is a woman, the fact that you have three All right. Latinos. All right, you got Elizabeth Hunter, you got Vidal. What do you, you say? Her, though? What do you say? Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. She has to say your son's name. Yeah, it's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear, I'm hearing great things about his growth on the trail, and I think the more you say that he's going to be a puppet. For Kathy. I didn't. I've never heard <laughs> <laughs> Means that he won't be. I mean, I just said that. I've heard that. People have said that. And actually, and he's working harder than people. You know, I like he's husband. walking. He's walking. You can't go. You and you got the firefighters. I mean, All right. the good. correct answer is Oscar. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sheriff. Did you pick Jim Sc Scafidi, too? No, I did not pick Jim Are you Scafidi. sure? We're no, I picked Kristen. I picked Kristen. You know, don't, don't jump. Oh, I, I was. Hey, I started that. I was the first one. I was to, the first media no, no, person I was to the, interview right, Kristen. What about for Sheriff? I was the first one Bill to Bra call Bill, her a star. Bill Brown. Come on, Bill Brown. He's got Kamala Harris and he's... Bill Brown? But 50% yeah. plus one, no runoff? Yeah, probably, run probably, yeah. No runoff. Runoff? No runoff? What do you think? I think runoff, but I don't know. You say runoff. No runoff. Auditor, controller? I don't know. I don't want to compromise my objectivity. But, but you've already written the piece. <laughs> what, do you, what, what difference does it make? You're not going to write about it again, are you? I would say that, <laughs> what, what is it, conventional thinking would say Betsy Schaefer was going to win that because she's widely endorsed by the Democratic Party. So that would be you, then, the conventional thinking. Is that what you're saying? No, I think she's going to have way more endorsements and more people voting for her up and down the but ticket. But will she have more votes, Josh, I think is the question yeah, I'm trying yeah, to get Yeah, probably. At. It'll be close, though. It'll be close. 
Jan Christian has more name recognition. She's ran for other stuff. She's run before, and it's a low turnout election. It's going to give Republicans a somewhat of an edge, and Jan is sort of the, the Republican in this race. Sorry, she's declined to stay. I don't know what you're talking but about. But she is backed by the Republican she's Republican. interest. Yeah, she's and um, Republican. she's a Republican in name only, or not name only. She's a not, she's <laughs> declined a state in name only. Um, you know, I, I just think that even. Quickly. She, <laughs> I don't know how to Collect call Collect your thoughts. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, assuming you call Betsy eventually <laughs> before right Tuesday. Um, what do you think is going to win that? I think she's got the Indian endorsement. I think she'll win. Now, correct answer is Jen Christensen. Mm -hmm. And then in the statewide offices, you endorsed Gavin Newsom. He's going to win. Yeah. And I think I think that won't be too Democrats. Joyce Dudley endorsed Antonio Villaraigosa, but I, saw that. I don't think it's going to be enough. What do you think? Let's just say it's that endorsement event. Villaraigosa shows up. He's got a PA system. He's got a mic. There's no electricity. There's nothing that connects the microphone to the PA system. It's a complete prop. And that sort of is a uh, metaphor for his campaign. Ooh. 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 How's that? That's good. I thought you were going to be nice today. The anecdotal. <laughs> you had to get it in. I tried. Josh, I tried. tell us how the things are going to come on on Prop 71. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to pass. No, isn't that the that, that, It's no on 71. Didn't you go no on 71? You wrote it. I wrote the guy down there. The 71, the cap and trade one. Mystery prompts, yeah. The cap and trade vote no on that, even though Jerry Brown supports it. It has about as much chance of passing as the Giants do winning the World Series. Easy. Oh, man. Easy, easy. Yeah, with the Dodgers. Better than the Dodgers. <laughs> you don't want to bring up the Dodgers, I don't think, today. All right. Well, it's, it's, it's we've written all these predictions perfect. down, and we'll forget about them. I no, I, I'm, I'm making a bunch of bets. I'm a, I'm a did it, did I leave anything out, Sheriff, Auditor, Controller, District 3? You left else? out Michael Aaron Woody and uh, Justin Fareed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fareed or Woody? I was kind of impressed with Woody. I hadn't seen him before. I think that Woody is a put-up job by uh, Salud Carbajal. It's going to come out after the election that Salud is paying his under the table to be the spoiler in this. That would be <laughs> wrong, that's for sure. <laughs> that stuff doesn't, doesn't Justin, usually happen Justin, anymore. salute rematch? Yes. Okay, all right. Thanks to tonight's panel, Laura Capps, Nick Walsh, and Josh Molina. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please visit our website, newsmakerswithjr.com, to check out my blog posts on politics and media in Santa Barbara and beyond, and our YouTube channel, where you'll find an archive of our past shows and special interviews. <clears throat> Thanks again to our director, J.P. Montalvo, to our crew, Ken, Lauren, Suzanne, and Catherine, and as always, our top-ranking, high-powered, high-energy senior executive producer, Hap Freund. Next time, we'll be analyzing the election results and see how the predictions came out. Don't forget to vote. We'll see you next time on Newsmakers.